Hello and welcome to a new Vanguard Overdress news video. Uh, this one's a little late. Whoops. <laughs> I've only just started doing these and I'm more ready for off schedule. That's okay. Uh, basically, yeah, we're going to be talking about some of the news uh, that released uh, this week for Vanguard Overdress. Uh, there was like some clan selection stuff, but we're mainly focusing on Overdress. So let's go ahead and do that. So I was actually prepared this time. Haha. <laughs> I, I actually got all the news and uh, had it all organized and everything. So hopefully it'll open. Come on. There we go. So this is our first piece of news. They've been doing this countdown recently. Uh, and this is one of the days of the countdown. And we're going to read through it. So we are two days away until the anime premiere live. Uh, tag or mention us in a post with the secret hashtag available only during the premiere to stand a chance to get one display of special series 08 clan selection plus volume 2 so yeah basically they're going to be premiering the vanguard overdress first episode uh on the 24th of march that's like 3 a.m on the 25th for me in uk time so i'm gonna have to stay up and you may think why would you have to stay up well one thing that isn't mentioned here but i have confirmed is that once the premiere finishes, they will be immediately unlisting or privating the episode, meaning you will have to watch it live if you want to watch it. Uh, it does, the episode does premiere the normal way as it usually would in April. So if you do miss it, you, you know, you won't, you'll only have to wait a few days. But let's face it, if you're a Vanguard fan, you're going to want to catch this. Uh, I do have a piece of advice for this um maybe it's a piece of advice but sure don't want me to tell you but i'm gonna say it anyway um even though they plan on unlisting slash privating the premiere once it's done that change won't go into effect if you still have the video open so when the premiere happens either open it up on your phone or your pc and as long as you don't close or refresh the video you can kind of keep it up for as long as you need <laughs> So if you want to watch it a second time or you want to like take screenshots for videos or anything like that, uh, you can do that. Uh, at least that's what I've done with like premieres and stuff in the past or just private videos in general. If I suspect a video is going to be private soon or something like that, I will just keep it open. And again, as long as it's already open, it's already open. So feel free to use that if you need to. Um, of course, you still won't be able to keep it up forever. But there you go. There's a, perf a perfectly legal but slightly dodgy way of being able to watch the episode a second time. <laughs> and I'm probably going to try and do that. Uh, and other than that, yeah, cool. There's a giveaway. There's a hashtag. They say secret hashtag, but let's face it. You're going to see it on all over your Twitter feed anyway. Different flight or someone is probably going to tweet it out. I'm probably going to tweet it out. Uh, a link to my Twitter in the description. So you don't actually have to watch this to find the hashtag. But you're guaranteed to find the hashtag if you watch it I guess. So that's cool. Uh, it's cool they're giving away uh, a Clan Selection Plus booster. That's pretty neat. I do think it's a bit of a missed opportunity. I feel like the prize should have been one copy of each Overdress start deck. I think that would have fit a little bit better like thematically. But... Oh, well, I guess I can't complain about a free giveaway, right? So, yeah, there we go. There's that. Now let's talk about the cards. So we got two... They're calling them ride lines now. I'm I'm probably going to keep calling them ride chains because I'm not good at, um, like, learning. Like, this old dog can't learn new tricks. I'm going to probably just keep calling them ride chains. So if I do that, please don't get mad at me. So speaking of, here's the new ride line... For, um, I was gonna say Kagero. It's Dragon Empire. Kagero doesn't exist anymore. Like I said, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Uh, anyway, double gun of Dust Storm Bot. When this unit is rolled upon, if you went second, draw a card. This is the same effect as, you guessed it, every starter. Which is cool. I like the vanillas. I, I, I assume at some point we might mix things up or get a different one, maybe get some forerunners. But for now, I'm happy that every nation is getting a lot of support for this effect because this seems like a pretty good effect and honestly even if every single grade zero star of vanguard ends up having this exact same effect that's cool too i don't mind um yeah so that's your vanilla i would say more about him but he's a vanilla so like you know uh run him or don't um here's our next one 
Uh, Gunning of Dust Storm Nigel. When this unit is rolled upon by Cataclysmic Bullet of Dust Storm, Soul Charge 1 when your opponent's Ragguard is retired during your main phase, Counter Blast 1 and retire this unit. Uh, choose one of your opponent's Ragguards and retire it. So, a lot of interesting stuff going on there. So, it's cool that it's part of a ride line, but it also has a, an effect on the Ragguard Circle. That means that you still have a reason to run a place out of it, right? Because the cool thing with Overdress is for a lot of cards, you don't need to run a playset anymore. Because if it's just for your ride line, then you can just run one copy of it as a, in your ride deck. And that's really cool. That makes budget decks a lot more viable because if there's a really like hard to get like triple red boss unit or whatever, you only need to pull one copy of it and then just slap it in your ride deck. And then uh, it's perfectly playable. But this is also a cool way of like still encouraging you to run the playset anyway because it gets an extra effect on your ragguard circle. So you can have one in your ride deck and then another one, like another three copies in your main deck so that you can still use this. Or, you know, you can draw it to your hand and not have to use the ride deck. Because remember, you still got to discard a card to use the ride deck. And you kind of want to avoid that if you can, unless you can combo that with other card effects, if you get my gist. So, yeah, uh, when it's unit thrown upon, yep, yeah, that's the card that'll be next. So you want to ride, you know, it's a it's a ride chain. You, you ride chain it. You know how a ride chain works. I hope you know how a ride chain works. If you don't know how a ride chain works, it's like uh, you, you, you take similar cards and you ride them on top of each other. It's really not difficult. Um, and you get the soul charge, so that's nice. It seems like this is going to be a soul heavy deck. Uh, and when your opponent's rare guards retire during your main phase, counter blast one and retire this unit. Choose one of your opponent's rare guards and retire it. Interesting. So one thing I'll notice, I'll note, and this does make sense when you see the other cards in this deck. But having to counter blast and retire this unit just to retire one of your opponent's rare guards, you're giving up a lot just to kind of like graze your opponent's knee. You know, it's like you're breaking your own leg. <laughs> just to lightly slap your opponent um but of course that on its own seems pretty bad but as i mentioned this is a right line so actually it's not that bad um as we'll see uh in the next few cards so here we go this is cataclysmic bullet of dust storm randall when this unit is wrote upon by eugene which is the grade three that will be next so there's that Draw a card, choose it to one card from your drop, and put it into your soul. When this unit attacks, if your opponent has two or less rare guards, counter blast one, soul charge one, and this unit gets 5,000 power until the end of that battle. So, this is where that starts to kind of come into place. Basically, hey, remember the thing I said about overdress decks where they all seem to run on some kind of gimmick or play style, and then all of their like game plans revolve around can you do the deck's gimmick if so gain power well we're starting to see that here basically uh this deck's playstyle is retiring opponent's units if retired opponent's units gain power uh which is why you might want to retire your other grade one unit from earlier because if you need that power which you might need that power uh if you can use that power then you can uh climb over uh, a grade 3 vanguard, so if you're going second or whatever, that might be useful, right? Without a boost. And you don't need the boost, really, you know? Because, like, if you're retiring your own unit, y you get my idea, right? Um, and you don't need a trigger, too, which is good. Uh, so, again, not, like, an amazing one. In fact, I'm kind of lukewarm on uh, this Dragon Empire stuff in general. Uh, it looks okay. And I'm sure, like, there's more that we haven't seen yet. Maybe some, like, support backup units or even just units that go uh, from the trial deck that make these a little bit more powerful. But so far, they're definitely one of the more least interesting decks to me. But they're also very kind of Kagero or Narakami. And, I mean, those were never, like, my favorite decks in the first place, right? So, but, I mean, it doesn't seem awful. It certainly doesn't seem awful. So, there you go, you get your draw power, and you can choose one card from your drop and put it into your soul. So, uh, one thing you could do, which is actually pretty clever, is you could chain... Because I love it, I love the idea of chaining the ride deck, right? So, like, using the ride deck to get extra things, right? And so, for example, you could intentionally put a card that you want in your soul 
to the drop zone by using your ride deck. So if there's a card that you specifically want in your soul, maybe there's a card that has an effect in the soul, for example, you can use your ride deck to discard that card and then use this card's effect to put it into the soul, which is actually not a bad little combo. I quite like that. I like little combos like that. That's a, that's a really nice little idea. And I'm sure there's a lot more you can do with this card once we see other like potential combinations and stuff. Maybe if I had a less smooth brain, huh? So we have Heavy Artillery of Dustorn Eugene. So, uh, once per turn, you can rest two rare guards to choose one of your opponent's rare guards, retire it, and this gets uh, 10,000 until the end of that turn. Before we read the rest of this, that's already really good. Having to rest your rare guards instead of retire them is a lot better, which I guess makes sense for a boss unit, huh? And if... This deck revolves around giving you power for, for, for successfully uh, executing your uh, like retires and stuff. You can just rest or retire your back row, so you won't even need them. So there's that, right? You know, you don't really need your back row, so you can use it as fuel for the effects of this ride chain, basically. Ride line. Uh, once per turn, if your opponent's rare guard was retired this turn, Soul Blast 5, look at the number of decks from your deck as the number of opponent's open rare guard circles, choose any number of units from among them and call them two rare guard circles, put the rest to your soul. Oh boy, let's, uh, let's kind of go through that again. If your opponent, like just to kind of break it down step by step, so if your rare guard was, was retired this turn, so you're using this to chain with this. I believe, because both of these are Vanguard Circle effects, so this card is basically useless as a, as a rare guard. Um, I mean, he has 13k, so he's not like useless, useless, but you want him on your Vanguard more so than anything else. You want to put him on your Vanguard, and you want to Persona ride him there. So, yeah, you're using this first effect to chain, which sets off this one, and then you can Soul Blast 5 to look at the same number of cards from the top of your deck. Uh, as your opponent's open rare guard circles. So you want to retire a lot. If you're playing against this deck, you want to fill your rare guard circles up as much as possible. Um, which is actually bad. You don't want to do that because you want to have cards in your hand to guard with. And so putting those in the rare guard circle. Okay, that's interesting. I can see I can see where they go on that. And then choose any number of unit cards among them. Uh, call them into the rare guard circle and put the rest of your soul. So... The downside here is you don't want to get a lot of order cards here, but to be fair, I don't really feel like many of the decks run that many order cards. I would say the most you'd run would be a playset of two different order cards, probably, so eight. And in a 50 card deck, you're only going to get like one or two order cards, and you could potentially be searching like up to five, so... And then being able to call them onto your rare guard circle... Yeah, and it doesn't even say empty rare guard circle. It just says rare guard circle. So you can ride them over the ones you rested earlier. Haha, <laughs> not bad. Okay, you know what? I may have been a bit too harsh on this deck. I quite like it. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's some good combos there. And there's probably a lot more you can do even outside of that. Uh, so this will be in um, Genesis of the Five Greats, the first booster, as you probably expected. But I thought I'd clarify that just in case anyone was wondering. And there's going to be another deck here too. So we'll take a look at that in a sec. I'm just going to take a drink first. All right. Um, let's take a look at the other deck. So this one is Brent Gay. And before anyone else says it, we're all thinking it. This one looks a lot like... I was gonna make like a joke and say this looks like um, like Mega Colony, but you know, like a joke that this looks like a clan that looks nothing like. But get your Link Joker jokes out of the way. It's Link. Jo it's a very cutesy Link Joker, actually. I like I like that a lot. All of the units in this ride line are like very kind of pink, and I like that a lot actually. Uh, it's a small change because the other Link Joker units in the past had a lot of red to them. So even just the change of like making everything pink and then maybe adding some like love hearts and stuff. I like that. That's very, it's very cute. Um, as for the effect, it's, it's a start of Vanguard. Y you know, there's not much to go into, but there will be a lot to go into in a sec, as you'll see. So, Carnonoid Rutus. When this unit is placed in the Vanguard circle, search your deck for up to one wild card. Reveal it, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. 
During the battle, this unit attacks or boosted. If your world is in Dark Knight or Abyssal Dark Knight, this unit gets 2,000 power. What's a world? I already know. I'm asking you. What's a world? Uh, basically, they're actually doing interesting stuff with water cards. Congrats, Bushy Road. I was gonna clap that, and I kind of am, but I'm also holding my microphone in my hand, so, um, I can't actually clap. Uh, I guess I could, like, tap the desk. I don't know how <laughs> good that sounded. Um, yeah, what's a world card? Uh, basically, it's an order card. Uh, an order- well, let's actually go to it. Yeah, here we go. Hollowing Moonlight Knight. We'll go back to the other unit in a sec. We're just explaining what the worlds are right now. So Hollowing Moonlight Knight, after a set order is played, put it into your order zone. Uh, play this with Soul Blast 1. When this card is put into the order zone, draw a card. If your order zone only has wild cards, the following effects are active according to the number of cards in your order zone. One card, your world becomes Dark Knight. Two or more cards, your world becomes Abyssal Dark Knight. So, if I'm correct, which I'm often not, but I did a little bit of research, and as far as I'm aware, this is how it works. This is your order card. Uh, well, this is your wild card, basically. It's an order card that's treated as a wild card because when you place it into your order zone, it turns your field into a world. So, or at least that order zone. So, if you have... Uh, one or more cards in your order zone. So if you put this in the order zone, your world becomes Dark Knight. If you already have a copy of this card or a different but similar card, and we'll get to that in a sec, and, and kind of chain it together, then it becomes Abyssal Dark Knight. Basically, by doing this, it gives you... It unlocks extra abilities and stuff that your other units can use, and Abyssal Dark Knight is a more powerful version of Dark Knight. That's what I'm aware of, but it seems like a very interesting premise here and it's one that we're gonna have to kind of dissect a lot and it's one i'm very interested to see in play so now let's go back to this card now that we know what it does so when it's placed in the vanguard circle search your deck for it to one wild card reveal it put it into your hand and shuffle your deck so basically this is very good uh I'm, i believe the start deck had something similar the brand gate start deck where you could just straight up deck search for the order card and thank god this also has it because basically if you cannot get that wild card into your order zone as fast as possible, this deck does not work. So having it guaranteed, because of course you're guaranteed to place it on the Vanguard Circle, because all you need to do is discard a card to get it from your uh, ride deck, and then you can just, well, search your deck for a wild card. So basically you're guaranteed to get a pretty good head start, which is great. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, but you should, basically. You'd have to be a very silly player um, to not. And then, of course, it gets another different effect on the Ragard Circle. During the battle, this uh, attacked or boosted. If your world is Dark Knight or Abyssal Dark Knight, it gets extra power. Once again, say it after me, every Overdress deck has a gimmick. If you achieve that gimmick, you get extra power. So, it's a lot more simple than you actually think, basically. This card turns your um, field into Dark Knight. And then if your field has Dark Knight, this gets extra power. That's basically the long and short of it. So let's go over to uh, Cubicia. When a world is put into your order zone, choose one of your units. It gets 5,000 attack until the end of turn. During, during your turn, if your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, this unit gets 5,000. This one only works in the Ragard Circle. This one only works in the Vanguard Circle. As I mentioned earlier though, it's cool that it has two different ones because then you have a reason to run more than one copy of it. So that's pretty cool. Um, and and yeah, basically once again, if you have a world, you get power. This is a very simple card. Notice though how the, how the other one was like, if you have two or more cards, it becomes a Bithel Dark Knight. So there's a reason to keep adding order cards to the order zone, or at least a second one. You probably want to add that second one now. I'm assuming, at least, because then you get that extra power. We'll see. Uh, here is another order card. So, in the darkness, nobody knows. After a set order is played, put it into your order zone. Play this with a Soul Blast 1. When you, when this card is put into the order zone, choose one of your opponent's front row rare guards and retire it. If your opponent... If your order zone only has Welk, thanks. <laughs> Stop covering the thing, please. There we, oh. Come on. There we go. If your order zone only has wild cards, the following effects are active uh, according to the number of cards in your order zone. Um, 
Can I zoom out? There we go. If your order zone only has wild cards, the following effects are only active, uh, active according to the number of cards in your order zone. One card, your world becomes Dark Knight. Two cards, it becomes Abyssal Dark Knight. So basically, it's the same card as the other one, except you have this when this card put to your order zone, choose one of your opponent's front row wear cards and retire it. Whereas the other one had a draw card. So basically, do you need the card draw? Or do you need the retire? And because your other unit here allowed you to search for a wild card, you can basically choose which one you want. Do you want the uh, the card draw or do you want to retire a front row rare guard? You know, that's a pretty good uh, decision to have, right? Uh, and I like it when, when decks give you good decision making. One thing that's very interesting is uh, this deck aesthetically is very Link Joker. Gameplay wise, not so much, right? Like this, I don't see any lock in here. That's very interesting. Uh, I kind of like that. I kind of like taking the aesthetics of some clans and giving them slightly new gameplay. Um, because of course I'm a big proponent of clan identity. I hope the clan identity to some extent sticks around forever. But I don't hate the idea of mixing things up and doing new things with those identities. So this I'm kind of all for. It's Again, it's a very a little bit simple of just like you got to put your order card into the order card zone and then you get power for doing so but i don't hate it this card looks gorgeous man this like i mean just look at this artwork uh i'm pretty sure other people must also be simping for this card because i mean just look at it <laughs> oh that's really nice uh who drew it daisuku izuka you congrats get a raise uh, here's a chalky bicky because you're epic. Uh, Cardinal Dew's Orphist. During your turn, if your world is Dark Knight or Abyssal Dark Knight, this gets 5,000 power. Uh, so yeah, basically, do you have your world set up? Get power. If your world is Abyssal Dark Knight, so you need to have that second order card to get it up to Abyssal Dark Knight, you can counter blast to it. Call up to three Shadow Army tokens to Ragard Circle. Your world changes when you play a specific order. Shadow Army has power, 1005, and boost. So, and then you get your token. This is what the token is. May as well talk about this here since it ties into that other effect. Um, this represents a shadow, shadow Army token and cannot be put in a deck. Um, it's a token. You know what a token is. Congrats. Okay, back to here. So, this is cool. This is a good way of like filling up your field again. Uh, so you can afford to kind of use up any resources you need to. You have the two counter blasts. Uh, pretty expensive, but let's face it, this is your game plan. If you can set this off, you're probably doing pretty well. So that's kind of the gist of it. It's funny because when I first saw these cards, they looked a bit like scary and um, like intimidating. But then the moment you realize what a world card actually does, it becomes a lot more simple and easy to follow. So uh, I kind of like that. And yeah, I like this deck way more than the police the start deck one, at the very least. Um, this this kind of kicks ass. Will I play it? Probably not, but I definitely like the look of it. And uh, I like that they're doing new stuff with water cards. Like I said, I've said this a couple times in the past now. If you're going to keep the order cards around, do interesting stuff with them. And they're actually doing interesting stuff with them. Having decks revolve around like managing them and, and stuff like this is really cool and having like the order zone and having like different effects and stuff activate depending on what you've got in that zone i really like that that's really cool very interesting to see a deck that looks like well this and have no locking that's weird in fact it calls uh tokens that's very neo nectar of it but you know what I don't hate it still. I, I really like it. And again, the pink rather than the red adds a lot of uh, kind of interesting visual variety to it, you know? Like, even just a change as small as that makes it look really cool. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I've got for today. Uh, I'm sure there was probably other news and stuff, but like I said, I was mainly focusing on the new Overdress card reveals. And as I mentioned before, both of those are in Genesis of the Five Greats. So if you like those cards, that's the set to buy into. Although let's face it, that's the set everyone's buying into anyway. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much uh, all I've got for you today. Uh, let me know what you thought of those decks in the comments below. And I'll see you in future videos. If you like this, be sure to like and subscribe. And remember, for every ride line, there's always an asterisk. <laughs>